Hey guys, first we're going to talk about the technical aspect of me creating this layout. So I started off by creating a 7 inch by 7 inch circle in an 8.5 by 11 inch background. And all I've done there is selected the shape tool on the left side and made it 7 inches by 7 inches. And that's going to take the color of whatever you have in your color palette there. So all I'm doing here is dragging guidelines to the center and the edge points of the circle so that it's easy for me to snap my photos in there. Now I already have my four photos open and these are all travel images. And what I'm going to do now is just drag them into the quadrants and resize them so that when I clip the mask that they look great and everything that I want to have showing is showing in my photos. Here I have a picture of Paris, just the kind of evening life in Paris. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to resize it just to those guidelines and it's, it's quite easy to do. This photo is from Boston and it's just uh, our feet and I love that beautiful brick pathway that we're on. And the last photo is one of my favorite places in the whole world. It's called Chatsworth. It's in the north of England. And if you guys are big Pride and Prejudice fans, this is the house that Mr. Uh, Darcy lives in, in the Kira Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice. So it's one of my favorite places to visit, especially in the summer highly recommend that you get to go there if you guys travel to England. So we get to go every summer so we're pretty lucky. Okay so I have all four of my photos in place. Now what I'm going to do is I have all my photos above my shape. What you're going to do next is hold down Alt or if you're on a Mac the Option key and then that little box with the arrow will appear when you hover over the uh, the line in between your shape your photos so you just hold down option or alt and click when that little box and arrow appears and that clips your photos to the shape mask behind how awesome is that so I'm going to show you that one more time. All of your photos are above your circular shape or whatever shape you want to use. You hold down the Option or Alt key. Option if you're on a Mac, Alt if you're on a PC. Um, and hold that key down. And when you hover over the, the point in between your images or your shape to your image, it creates a little box with an arrow. And when you see that little shape, you click and it clips your mask to the shape behind. So super duper easy using that Option or Alt key. And there you go. All of my four photos are in the four quadrants of the circle. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to print this out and cut it with your silhouette machine. So I'm saving my file uh, into my pictures as a PNG file. And this is important because that's the kind of file that you need to open in the Silhouette Studio software. So next I'm opening my Silhouette software. There's a big image of Chatsworth there. Okay, so I'm going to open the file that I just saved.
and there's the file. You can see that when you open it, it comes in at 8.5 inches by 11. And I'm just going to make sure that that file is right on the print line for my page. So I'm just going to line that up there. Next I'm going to go back to Adobe Photoshop Elements and save a file of just the circle, the 7 inch circle, as a PNG and that's going to still be on an 8.5 inch by 11 inch background. So I have that circle and you want it to be a dark color that will make it easier. I saved that and I'm going to go ahead and open that file. Okay, so now that I have the outline file I'm going to go in here and trace that shape. And you want to trace the outer edge and then delete the gray part. So now I'm going to copy and paste that outline over top of my photo image. And then I'm going to make sure that it's right on the edge of my photo circle. So before I go to print, I've just realized that if you go to your page setup, you're going to want to turn on your registration marks uh, because that's what is going to make the whole print and cut work. So next I'm going to go to print my picture. You just go to the normal print menu. Make sure you're setting up your printer to print on photo paper. So I've just done that and my page is printing. Once that page is printed, I'm going to go ahead and choose the cut um, or send menu in my Silhouette software to send it to the Silhouette machine. I'm going to put it in the upper left hand corner of my sheet as you can see here on the diagram and it will read the registration marks and know exactly where my paper is on the page so that it cuts a circle perfectly around my photo circle. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Hooray, so it worked. You can see here when I take it off of the sheet that it cut a pretty perfect circle right around my photos. Just have to take it off of here really carefully because I do have a brand new mat, so it's quite sticky. I'm not too worried about my photos bending. I know that uh, once I adhere them onto the page, then they'll be they'll be totally flat and straight and fine. So there you go. That is uh, ready to go on my background. So I'm working with the beautiful Pink Fresh Studios Escape the Ordinary collection. And I've grabbed the Explore B-side pattern paper there in the background because I like that subtle texture that it's providing. And I've also grabbed the fabric die cuts. These are really, really cool. And as soon as I saw these arrows, it made me think about a compass. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere my photo circle onto a larger circle of white cardstock. And I think it just has about an eighth of an inch um, overhang on all the sides. Okay, now that that's straight, I'm going to put my fabric arrows on the north and south poles of my photo circle. 
And I'm just going to go through my papers to see what other arrows I can find for east and west. So I love these wood grain ones here. And then there's colored ones here, but those are quite big and I need them to be the same sort of color. There are a lot of really cool patterns in this collection. Okay, so I'm going with the wood grain here and there are two that are, I think, exactly the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut those out with my scissors. And I want to be careful not to ruin the other triangles around them because I might be able to use them on a different layout. Especially that cool gray wood grain. That's a pretty cool um, pattern there. Okay, so when I have a look at the small size of those arrows on the left and right of my page, I'm not really so sure. So I'm going to cut out this larger... Uh, wood veneer, wood grain, sorry, shape, just triangle shape here. And the bummer of this one is, is that I only have one on the page. So I'm seeing how I can make that work. And if I did that at the top, I would have to choose a different color to go on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to try out this gray triangle on the bottom. But you really lose that triangle amongst the background pattern. So that's not really working for me. So I'm going to cut out this other gray triangle to see if I do another gray one at the top, if that looks any better. And yes, I definitely think I like that. It adds just a little bit more width behind those fabric die cuts. So I have the wood grain one on the right, and I'm gonna kind of break my own rules. Usually I, in a, in a paper collection that has two sheets, of each design. I don't normally do this because it's it's almost like wasting the second sheet. But because it's in um, an area that I could possibly cover up, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the triangle from the second sheet of this paper in the paper collection. So there you go. That balances out the uh, triangles on the page. Okay, next I'm going to layer more paper. And again, I I just have um, about an eighth or a quarter of an inch of an outline of the blue pattern underneath my photo. Because I really do want this layout to be clean and I just want that touch of extra color back there. So I went ahead and did the same thing with the green. So now I have three different layers underneath my photos, but it just adds that little bit of color. I also like the idea of kind of layering the fabric die cuts in between those layers. And this is definitely the point at where I need to start adhering some things together because it's getting tricky moving things around with this many pieces. So here we go. I'm going to commit and add some dimensional adhesive to my photo. Or photos, as I should say, photo circle, whatever you want to call it. And I really love that all the colors on the outside are kind of bringing in the colors in my photo. The rusty red in the bricks are in the background pattern paper. There's a nice green in the photo of Chatsworth. There's blue on my husband's blue jeans. 
and it's just kind of all working together but nothing is screaming uh, tons of color. It all looks pretty neutral. And it's quite easy to make sure that I um, get the center of my circle here with these arrows because of the the places where my photo has changed. So that nice, nice straight line makes it really easy to line up my embellishments here. So on these, what I'm going to do here, just to add a little bit of extra interest, is cut the inner triangle out just on two sides so that I can lift that up, put a piece of dimensional adhesive under that, and just give it a, a bit more interest by, you know, a little bit of texture there. And if I add a piece of pattern paper behind it, like this blue one, you'll get a tiny little peak of that blue when you look at the layout from the side. So I'm just going to back this with blue. This is just, you know, one of those little tiny touches that, that adds something to your page and doesn't take very long at all. And the most important thing here is just to make sure that you can't see the blue on the edge of the triangle, that you can only see it in the middle. So I'm just going to do my second one exactly the same. Okay, so now all the little bits are adhered to my background photo. Um, and I can move that around freely so I can, you know, do whatever I want with that while I'm placing the rest of the elements on my page. So let me just show you some of the things um, that you can use to embellish with this collection. Okay, these Leatherette Alpha stickers have a really awesome texture and I love the little circles with numbers. There's some tags, there's some uh, wood letters that have gold foil on them, puffy stickers, which these are awesome, especially these little triangles here. Okay, so one of the first things I've noticed was the circle in the chipboard stickers and it says Chase the Sun and I need a center point to my compass and I think that this could be perfect. So I added some baby powder here just so that that wouldn't be sticky and I could kind of lay it down there to make my decision. These are little sewn hearts and they come in the stitched hearts pack and instead of that saying chase the sun, um, which I mean, I go to England, so I'm not always chasing the sun. Um, I'm going to cover that up with a stitched heart instead. So it still has that awesome kind of compass feel in the middle and it doesn't say something that I don't really want it to say. So always think of how you can use your supplies to make them work for you. So one thing that I want to be really big on this layout is my title and I'm going to have it wrap around the um, the photo circle and it's going to say for the love of travel and so I'm just going to go ahead and loosely attach these leatherette alpha stickers to the background so that I can make sure that I'm getting them in the right place and I thought I was going to use that love word die cut but I'm not sure if I can make that work with the circular shape So this is definitely a very radial designed layout. I have a class at Big Picture Classes if you want to learn more about radial balance on your layouts. Um, it's called Principal Power, so check that out at my, my website. There is a link on the right side of the page of my website. Okay, so I need to find something to go there. 
that says love. I can actually write it out with my leatherette stickers and I think I'm going to add another stitched heart there. Because that die cut that I had there before, it just doesn't lend itself to that radial shape. Now, I decided when I was placing my title that this really needed to be straight instead of at an angle so that it really did like a compass pointing north, south, east, and west. Okay, so that's exactly how I want it. Um, and then what I'm going to do, this is also something I thought it, that it needed, was a bit of a frame around the outside of the layout, just because it is quite a light pattern and it needed something to ground it. So it needed that dark blue uh, cardstock frame. And literally it's going to be so incredibly thin just because I've already created this massive um, photo compass and I can't fit it otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to commit to that because I think that looks pretty good. It, it definitely adds something to it and it's nice to have a bit more blue. Okay, next I'm going to adhere the compass to the center of the page just so I make sure that I have everything right where I want it. And just to be sure it's pointing exactly in the center, I'm going to put my clear ruler there at the bottom. I really don't know what I would do without a clear ruler. <laughs> it is definitely one of my lifesavers. And as you can see here, those arrows are going to go exactly to the outside dimensions of the page. Just because I added that dark blue frame. And I'm going to put some dimensional adhesive underneath these fabric arrows just to help them stick up a bit. Okay, next I'm going to adhere the arrows on the uh, east and west sides. And again, I'm going to make sure that those are pointing exactly at the 6 inch mark. Next I'm going to go ahead and adhere that circular chipboard piece right in the middle. And I think that is just absolutely perfect. I'm so excited about that. There's lots of dimension on this page. I'm pretty much adding uh, dimensional adhesive to everything. Okay, now to get my title in place and I just have to say that these alphas are really great um, at not ripping the page you can definitely move them around a bit and they're still sticky these are not the ones that you're gonna have to uh, put something it like adhesive underneath okay so add to add a little a few um, more arrows to the compass. I'm pulling out those little puffy sticker arrows and they're in different colors and I'm putting them at the 45 degree marks around the compass and that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to uh, add my title. And it is just a bit fiddly, just trying to get it all lined up here. So this dark green one is slightly bigger than the others, but I'm just going to push it underneath the compass a little bit so that only the uh, a smaller portion of it sticks out.
and then I just need one more and I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow one and just stick that underneath the compass so that a tiny bit of the edge piece sticks out. Okay, I'm just going to add my journaling at the bottom left hand corner of the page, but I want to kind of have something at the top of my journaling to start it off. Um, and I love this, there is always more to discover sticker. So I also have decided that I wanted something besides just, you know, the the photos to run into each other. I needed some sort of delineation in between my photos. So I'm adding some yellow striped washi. And this is from an old Amy Tangerine collection. And this is my favorite ever washi. And it's because it's really thin. I love thin washi. So I'm adding that um, on between each of the photos. Okay, next I'm adding in the There is Always More to Discover sticker, and I'm going to put dimensional adhesive along the bottom, so I'm just going to rub some baby powder on the back. And below that I put a little puffy sticker just to give it a bit of a design along the bottom. It's that yellow one with like a triangle bottom or a pinked bottom, I guess you could say. And part of this phrase sticker is going to stick to my photo. And then that gives a nice place to add my journaling, especially with that yellow puffy sticker. It kind of points down to my journaling. So I've just printed this out on a four inch by six inch piece of white cardstock and I've printed it out. And this is my favorite font. It's called Rough Typewriter. It looks like an old typewriter. And I'm just cutting those strips so that there isn't any too much white on the edge, I should say. And this one's a little bit thick, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that. And then I can just adhere these down to the bottom corner of the page. Okay, there are so many awesome stickers in this collection and I'm just going through to see what else I can add around the photos because I feel like there's a lot going on on the outside of my circle and I want to add some more to the inside. So I'm grabbing some of these phrase stickers um, and they really work perfectly with the photos because that perfect view um, photo was from Barcelona and we had an amazing kind of penthouse view and um, explore is perfect. Look at these star stickers too. So I'm adding those around the circle. And those stars are on the, um, in the Ephemera pack. So you have to add your own adhesive to the back side of those and I'm using glue dots to do that. It's definitely the fastest way. And that just adds in a little bit more color to the page. But as you can see, it's the color on this collection is so subtle. And I absolutely love that because it really allows my photos to stand out on this page. Even though I have used a lot of color in the product that I've used, it still um, makes it so that my photos are take center stage. I love that little heart sticker there too. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this looks. I'm really happy with the balance of the page, um, the radial symmetry. But guess what? I realized uh, just as I was finishing this layout that 
it was supposed to be a double page layout. So um, I'm going to tell you about how I made this a double page layout. You can see the single page that I did before. Um, my journaling is in the bottom left corner and I essentially kept everything the same. I just needed something to connect it to the left page that I was going to create to go along with it. So what I did was I added a piece of pattern paper underneath the left side of the compass that connected the left page to the right page. My journaling stayed the same. All I had to do was lift up a tiny corner of that left side of the compass, slide a piece of pattern paper underneath, um, and replace the adhesive. On the left side, I wanted to stick with the travel theme, but I didn't want the same shape as on the right. I needed something that led your eye to the compass on the right. So what I created was a horizontal line of photos and words, um, along with arrows that pointed your eye from left to right, leading you to the right page. Now luckily, because I was working with the collection pack, I had another sheet of the Explore paper that I used on the background so that I could use the same pattern on the background and put those two pages together. But I really, really love the way this turned out. It was a happy accident that I didn't get the assignment correct the first time. So let me just show you how the two pages work together. So this layout makes me immensely happy. So you can see here I use the same background pattern paper and the pattern that I added to connect the two pages is called transform and I put it behind my photos on the left side of the page and you can see it peeking out just to the left of the compass on the right page. The balance here really works because you have a heavy horizontal line leading you to that big compass. I kind of balance some of that compass with a green tag on the left corner and I added some more words, um, arrows, and stickers along the bottom of my horizontal photos on the left. All in all, I call this a very happy accident. I'm so happy with how this page turned out and it's definitely one of my favorites from 2017. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Escape the Ordinary collection via the link in my video notes. Thank you so much for watching and as always, thank you for your support and clicking on those affiliate links. Happy creating and don't stress out if you decide that you need to turn a one-page layout to a two-pager. It can be done. Thanks so much.